Hello folks. So the weather continues to be terrible. So I've only got one scope out and it's going to be the Rasa and I'm trying something different today. I'm going to go after a comet. Um, I can't recall the name of it off the top of my head. I'll put it on the screen here, but I think it's going to be high in the south. And I'm not sure how well it's going to show up with a wide field scope here, but um, if I see a, a star that looks smudgy, I think I'll be confident that's my comet. And um, it's not going to be in color because I'm still using a mono camera right now. So what I'm going to do is, um, hi Kane, can I record this without you making any noise? Thank you. Um, I, I'm going to, uh, he, he threw me off. Oh, I'm, I'm going to take out my, my narrowband filter and I found two light pollution filters um, in, the, in the basement and that one of them is a two inch CLS astronomic filter and the other is a two inch Optolong L-Pro filter. You know, it's been so long that I don't even recall when I bought these. I'm surprised I even had them. I have no recollection of ever using them. But, you know, when you have a, a shelf full of stuff, you never know what you, what you might find. But in this case, I think I'm going to use the Astronomic CLS filter because it will give me um, a little more light pollution protection. Um, if I were capturing galaxies, I would definitely want to use an L-Pro filter, though, because... Um, it'll let in a little extra light pollution, but you're going to get better color. So, um, in this case, since I know I'm just, just going to be mono, I just want to see if I can pick up the comet moving. I don't mind using a CLS filter for that. So, um, well, I don't think I got anything else to say for now. I, oh, the moon is going to be 84% today. That's bad, especially when I'm doing broadband. So, uh, I might just drop the gain down to zero for this comet and to try and reduce the noise and I'll just go with quick exposures and hopefully um, I pick up something. Uh, I've only got a couple hours to play with because of the bad weather so um, we'll see if it works. All right, I'll see you later. Okay, so I thought this comet was going to be high in the south. It was my mistake. It's actually high in the north, which is even better for me because the moon um, is a little bit farther away because of that. So that's good. And there's the Rasa pointing up. And um, this is what's bugging me right now. Look at all this junk coming for me. I, I don't have much time at all. Um, yeah, I I'll be lucky if I even get an hour on this comet. But the good thing is I did find the comet. I'm so excited. It's always exciting when you're not sure if something's going to work. Or, I've done comets before, but it's been a long time. And uh, let me show you um, uh, what I've got. Oh, let me show you first. Um, this is the website I use to find the comet. Um, uh, Skylive.com, uh, and I just searched for the comet I'm interested in, and it's C slash 2017 T2. Uh, pan stars and all I did is I just took the uh, the right ascension and declination from this website and I plugged them into um, plate solving uh, or the framing and mosaic wizard and I clicked on RA and I just plugged those coordinates into um, into these boxes here now the thing is um, let me show you really quick how do you know what format to put it in I did like um, a quick search on M6 or any other object first. Oops, maybe I should have. There, once you pull up an object on anything, then you can see the format it wants it, and then you can just plug in the coordinates you get from that website. So that's that. Um, and let me show you. Oh, and these are the settings. Uh, that that The moon at 84% is definitely um, affecting me. And my mean readout is um, pretty high at 2400, so I cut my exposure down to 15 seconds. I've got the gain all the way down to zero and offset 10. Um, 15 second exposures on my CLS filter. I'm going to capture, I've got this repeat 200 times. I'm going to capture as many frames as I can. And let me show you. Um, I think that's it right there, right? dead center. Those coordinates took me right to it. And I, I, I still have my 
cable and fry. I didn't put that little cable router on, so I'm still getting the fraction spikes. But check this out. I think I actually see, I don't know how well you can see it in the video, but I do think I see a, a bit of a tail there going on. Very cool. Um, I wasn't able to really ever pick up a tail with my refractors. I don't know. But maybe the, the comment at the time I was capturing it wasn't bright enough. But this one, I definitely see the tail. And this comet, it's going to be getting closer and closer. So it's going to be, you, you, no one is missing it right now. You, it's going to get um, really close, I think, a few months from now. So I'm kind of about early right now. And my histogram is, uh, it looks about right. I'm not Maybe a little bit over, but uh, I think I'm doing okay right now. And I'm going to capture flats um, when I'm done with this. I, like I said, I don't think I have much time. Um, and then I'll see if I can, uh, I, you know, I, I, I don't have a lot of experience actually stacking all of the data and making a good one, a single image of a comet. I've never actually tried that before. Well, I've tried it, but it wasn't very good. Right for now, I'm just going to focus on, uh, creating an animation. And, uh, and I don't know how much, it might be too far away still to pick up a lot of movement. I'm not sure. We'll see, but I'm excited about it. This is going to be cool. So I'm, I'm just glad it worked. And uh, with the little time I, I have to work with right now, and the weather is so horrible. Let's see. Um, <laughs> I see clouds forming out of nowhere right here. Man. That's okay. I, I'm imaging. I got something. So we'll see how it, how it looks. All right. Well, that's all I got, folks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.